Here we go. Oh, yeah. Good! <laughs> Graduation night, we were all sitting over at Helen by Cole. And we we're sitting in our caps and gowns, just excited, the whole class, just sitting there together. And the superintendent of the schools got up to give a commencement address. And uh, remember, it seemed like he was an older gentleman at the time. And he stood in front of us, and I'll never forget what he said. He came up and... Graduating seniors, parents, faculty, <laughs> honored guests, the high school years. are the greatest days <laughs> of your life. I'd like to repeat that. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought about the things I'd been involved in, the things I did, and they were pretty, pretty good years, neat moments. But I thought, you know, hopefully, if all goes well beyond tonight, after I get my diploma, if all goes well beyond tonight, I'm going to be living for about another 50 years yet, and if these have been the absolute greatest days of my life, there's not a whole heck of a lot to look forward to. <laughs> it's going to be an awful long 50 years. I thought, well, I've been through the best. Why not just count up on my graduation money, spend it, have a good time, and blow myself up? You know, because <laughs> there's nothing to look forward to. Uh, but as I look back at that statement, and uh, as I visit with students across the country and see what kind of things are going on, I think I get a better feeling for what people are trying to say when they say the high school years are the greatest days of your life. That's what I want to talk about today for a little while. It starts out that first day. Do you remember that first day of school? This is my first day of school, Mom. And, and I'm really excited, too. I really am. It's just, I know I need to be a doctor, aren't you? I really am, Mom. I really am. Yeah, yeah. And pretty soon, through all this excitement, this huge 57-passenger school bus comes rolling up, lights are flashing, stop sign comes out, a door magically opens up, Big fat school bus driver says, get in, kid, and shut up. <laughs> Little guy panics, Mom. Please. <laughs> Don't put me on the bus. I promise I'll do anything. I promise I won't shove noodles up my nose anymore. <laughs> Please. And the mother is just, no, no, you have to go to school and be educated. Go, go. And she gives him a push, and he trips into the bus. And as the bus pulls away, she looks to see him, and there he is in the back window going, <laughs> the tears are coming down. And then you walk into school and you've got all your new equipment right here. And you find out right away, whether you didn't know it, uh, whether you're a rich kid or a poor kid, just by the kind of equipment that you brought to school. The papers and the pencils and the rulers and the crayons. See, I came to school with a box of five crayons, two of them broken in the middle, and my mom got on sale somewhere for seven cents. <laughs> Thanks, mom. And I had to sit next to this girl Shoebox size of Crayolas, 9,000 colors, <laughs> little electric sharpener in the back, you know, <laughs> with extension cord. <laughs> I have 17 different colors of orange. I don't even have orange. <laughs> and, you, and you felt bad right away. And then, you, then after you've been in school for a little while, you start to understand some of the systems and some of the things that are happening. And you find out that every now and then they bring in these wonderful people and they replace the teacher and they're called substitute teachers. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't it fun? First thing that happens when a sub walks in the room, you turn to a friend and say, let's switch names. <laughs> you take Mark, I'll take Mary, okay? <laughs> and some of my favorite people in school, I loved them, were the school cooks, yeah? Didn't you love it? Don't you love school cooks? Short little chubby ladies, about four feet tall. <laughs> hey, want some more goulash? Ah, you know. Next time, want to put it in the tray? <laughs> <laughs> and, then, 
You know, my favorite thing about high school, though, has got to be high school romance. You know that? I love high school. <laughs> You're like, what romance? <laughs> Your time will come, dear. <laughs> Making that first phone call, that has got to be one of the most frightening things to do is to make that first phone call. I, it's, there's, oh, it's scary because a guy will go up to a girl at lunchtime and get her phone number and uh, go home that night, wait till about, oh, 9, 9.30, so, you know, kind of dark outside. Put some music on the radio, sounds cool, sounds cool in the background, you know. It, I'm hip, <laughs> yeah. Work on a voice to say hello. It doesn't come naturally. It's practiced on for quite a while. It, it's, um, hello? No. Hi there. Uh, Hey. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Dial that magic number. Yeah. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> oh, the mother answered. Hang up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was close. <laughs> when you finally hang on long enough, who do you usually get but little brothers or little sisters? That ever happened to you? You call up and say, uh, hi, is Susan there? Who's this? None of your business. Uh, do you want to put Susan on, please? Well, what do you want her for? Look, you little creep. Uh, I just want to talk to her. Do you want to put her on? Just a second. I'll see if she's here. Uh, because I don't know if she is. Um, you know what, you know? You know what, you know? Um, I've got a cold. You know what, you know? You know what, you know? I'm back, I'll go back to school for three months. <laughs> um, well, will you hold, please? I'll, I'll call her. Send the boy! <laughs> or the worst thing that ever happened is, is I'm going out for a girl for about two or three months. Everything was just going fine, and daddy, you know, we were having the greatest times. The music was playing in the background. Coffee guy was probably because we had radios going on an awful lot, but it was just all excited, and I called her up. Not only did she have a couple of little brothers and sisters in the house, but she also had a couple of extension phones hidden here and there throughout the house. And I made the mistake of calling up and sitting in the dark. Whenever you sit in the dark, you always tend to be more romantic. And I sat in there and said, uh, you know, and uh, <clears throat> I, uh, I really love you, you know. <laughs> then all of a sudden I heard this <laughs> click. Yes. <laughs> and you go over to the house the next day, and there you see little brother lined up with all of his neighborhood friends. Ah, oh, you love her, you love her. <laughs> Just, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and then you, then you go over and meet the parents. I don't know about you, but I could not stand meeting a girl's parents. It's the most frightening thing that's ever happened to me because you know, you, you, it's the only time in life I ever got a nervous twitch. The right hand side of my mouth wanted to be in my right eye. It looked like a bowl of jello. Just <laughs> and I'd leave the car door. I'd walk up. As soon as I rang that doorbell, ding dong, it hit. <laughs> the mother opens up the door. Hello. <laughs> Susan, there's someone here for you. <laughs> Perfect first date for me. Had to have been movies. The lights, the lights come down low. Both put your arm in the armrest. Boom. We're touching arms. <laughs> We're really touching arms. Oh, I think I'm in love. <laughs> Try to put your arm around a girl. <laughs> Honest to goodness, this really had to me. Paramount Theater in, in St. Cloud. First time I tried to put my arm around a girl, <laughs> gave her a bloody nose. <laughs> oh. <laughs> right there, yeah. The people behind us were saying, did you see that? You know? <laughs> and the girls say that the blood is coming down. It's, you know, Are you OK? Are you all right? No, I'm fine. I'm okay. Just don't hit me again. Will you, Bruno? You know. My favorite night of the year has got to be uh, a graduation night. I love graduation night. What a special time that is. That's when a class is just so together, and there's such a unity in, in the school, and a lot of magic happens. It's, it's so neat to see, especially when you see these, these big guys who are in their caps and gowns, and they've just graduated, and they've got that, that diploma, and it feels like an Olympic gold medal to them. And you can see them every time, and they'll come up and they'll go, Dad, Dad, uh, get the camera, will you? I'll get a picture over here. All right. Mom, 
Come here, Mom. Come here, Mom. I'm not going to hurt you. Come here. Come here. Give me a picture of, of us on graduation night. Um, remember that first day of school when you pushed me on the bus? Still got the scar right here. <laughs> remember, uh, remember that time I forgot that book at home and you had to bring it to school for me and you brought it to the cafeteria and you had curlers in your hair <laughs> and they took your picture and put it in the yearbook? <laughs> I'll never forget that, Mom. <laughs> remember, remember when I went out for homecoming? I, I got the dent in the car. And you let Dad think that you were the one that did it? Well, you done a lot for me, Mom, and you got me through school, and uh, <clears throat> I, uh, I love you, Mom. I, I really do. I, uh, smile. Right? <laughs> mothers. Mothers are so beautiful. Mothers just melt. They, you know, they just... I'll go on. <laughs> oh, stop it! <laughs> and they go on like that. These are the moments. These are the moments that people are talking about. When they say that the high school years are the greatest days of your life, I think that's what they're talking about. Because hopefully each year, uh, you grow in a way where your life is richer, where you have some magical things happening to you, that each year gets better for you. But uh, we'll have to say one thing about the high school years. They are the greatest days of your life so far. And the high school years have such moments in them that no matter how old you get to be, they keep coming back just alive and fresh and well. Moments of, uh, of those true friendships, Moments of the first romance. Moments of the special teachers that have had an impact on your life. Moments of the feeling of belonging to this school. But some people, they, they pass them up. And I didn't understand it when I was in high school, and I didn't understand it until recently, why people pass up in such moments and don't take an active part in them. Until I took a, a walk back into a first grade classroom this last fall, and let me tell you, before you graduate, you've got to go back into a first grade classroom and take a look. And do you know that we were all the smartest student in the class back in first grade? Do you remember how we used to raise our hands up? They'd say, what's the answer number one? And those hands used to just come up, and we would just get all wiggly and just go all over the place, and they'd fall out of the desk, and they'd get back in, you know. And, and just, you know, we thought we were on a game show going through the Amanda refrigerator freezer. <laughs> just, oh, please call me, please, oh, please call me. And the teacher would just sit there and tire us out for about five minutes, you know. And finally say, um, yes, Mark, what's the answer? Oh, um, it's 15. And she said, oh, I'm sorry, that's wrong. And so the whole class behind us would go, ha, 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 Sharon Brock's a dummy, Sharon Brock's a dummy. And it kind of hurt, and as we kind of slid back into our desk, it, it kind of hurt, and we kind of, but then about third grade, that hand was more like this, you see. And about seventh grade, it was right here. And freshman year, it's about like this. And by the time you get to be senior, it's, man, no way am I gonna put my hand up in the air. I've been through that game too many times. <laughs> That's what happens to us. Or to that girl who goes to the dance for the first time and she's a, she's a freshman or she's a sophomore and she's a pretty girl. And she's standing over here by the dance. She's saying, um, she'd like to dance, but a guy comes over and he says, do you want to dance? And she says, well, I'd love to, but I'd like to kind of wait till there's maybe more people on the dance floor. Well, rather listening to what she said, he takes that as a form of rejection. The way we protect ourselves in high school is with put downs. He's gonna protect himself. So he says something like, Hey, that's okay. I mean, uh, you're ugly anyway, you know? And he goes back over to his friends, and he's a big man. They all laugh at that line, and they kind of joke about it. And you go back down to the girl, and she's put so far down, it's just tough to get back up again. And that type of feeling has happened to every single one of us in this room. And what happens to a lot of people is that they tend to put up this shell. They put this shell up that says, uh, look, if I don't take any risks, if I don't get too involved, if I hold back a little bit, I can't make any mistakes, I can't get laughed at, and I can't get hurt. And they start with that shell their freshman year, their sophomore year, their junior year. By the time they get to be seniors, it gets pretty thick, and they don't get hurt until about a week after they graduate. Boy, what a moment that is. But a week after you graduate, when you're looking forward to what you're not too sure about, and you look back at these high school years, and the people who have used that shell see how empty it was. That, yeah, they didn't get hurt, but they didn't experience any of the great joy of the high school years either. And they find out that 
that Shell was more of a prison than a fortress. These are the moments to take some risks, some risks to belong, to create that belonging feeling in this school. And some of you sitting out there, and some people who sit and listen say, well, you know, look, um, I'm only a freshman, or I'm only a sophomore, or junior. As, as soon as I get to be a senior, that's when I'm going to get more involved. That's when I'm going to create a better feeling. That's when I'm going to really get, get crazy, because people look up to seniors. People admire us hey, as soon as I can just graduate. I've been stereotyped at this school. People only see me as this kind of person. As soon as I can graduate, that's when I can really be the kind of person that I really want to be in. Hey, as soon as I can just move away from home and get that first job. If I can only move away from home, get away from my parents, start making my own money, hey, as soon as I can just get that next promotion and move away, I am going to do so well because I'll do what I want to do. I can just live out my dreams. Hey, as soon as I could just retire. If I could only retire, I've been too busy in the past to get involved. I haven't been able to travel as much as I want to. I can start to do the kind of things that I really, hey, as soon as I'm dead. <laughs> as soon as I'm dead, I'll have all the time in the world. And now is not the time to seal up. But now is the time to take some risks, some risks to belong, some risks to have some fun during these neat high school years. Because you know why? When you graduate from here, you don't remember the books and the, and the desks in the classroom. You remember the people in this school, the people in this room, the people that mean the most to you in these close personal relationships. Those are the things you remember. And the more risks you take involved in the school and with your friends, the more the great joys you experience because of the high school years. These are the moments to take advantage of them and create such neat, neat things. It's a time to take a part, to be a part, to make these days the greatest days of your life so far. You've been outstanding. And I wish that the rest of your high school years that are coming up are filled with laughter, love, and tears of joy. Thank you so much. Bye -bye.
making sure these are the greatest days.